Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. This story begins billions of years ago when a meteorite crashed to Earth in northern Scandinavian territory. So we are talking about the limited edition meteorite dial Bulova. I reviewed meteorite dials on the channel before. Uh, Formex and Phoebus both come to mind. Both were beautiful, amazing, sellout, etc. But really, there's two companies in the world that I feel earn the right to use meteorite. Funny, uh, Omega Bulova, because they're both uh, both have made space watches. Omega, obviously, with the um, Speedmaster, and then Bulova. Kind of the lesser-known space watch, uh, was fielded in the 70s on Apollo 15, and Bulova technology, tuning fork technology, has powered many uh, space systems uh, spanning a couple of decades during um, our major time in space. Today we are going to be checking out that watch. Uh, on my own wrist today, I am wearing my more down-to-earth watch, Marathon GSAR Anthracite on the bracelet. And on my other wrist, something I haven't really broken out in a while, it is my Loomshot collab. I owned a Loomshot collab called The Glacier. And I always say, all I will say is, I had some conversations with Eric recently, and maybe something is in the works. Anyway, let's check out the Bulova. So because the meteorite is naturally occurring, uh, all the dials will be different. So I kind of just brought two out to show you what the differences might be. Again, they're all beautiful, all striking, all gorgeous, and all absolutely one of a kind. But we'll go over one of them in particular, uh, this one, just because, well, it's running now. So this is the Lunar Pilot Limited Edition. It's the 43.5 millimeter version, a titanium. They call it two-tone, but it is two tones. It's polished and uh, blasted titanium with meteorite dial model number 96A312 limited to 5,000 pieces. Now it comes mounted on, well, you know, let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, let's talk really quick. So as I mentioned in the opening, this is based off a meteorite that crashed in northern Scandinavia. I believe the Formex meteorite was the same one uh, in, in the early 1900s. And this meteorite broke up into several pieces. And one of the pieces for sure is used to create watch dials. Now, if you think about it, the watch dial is extremely thin. So it's a laborious process to cut it, slice it, polish it, and make sure it looks right, um, fault lines, etc. cetera. Uh, but they get a lot of dials out of it for sure, but it's a very expensive process. As such, the price of these watches is $1,495. But wait, there's more. If you act now, you will get this free gift with purchase valued at an astounding $128. It is a travel alarm clock uh, with the Bulova name on it, and it comes mounted in a little plaque with dates of interest and uh, some locations on it. You can keep it in the plaque, display it on your desk, or you can take the clock out, stand the clock up. It becomes a desk clock or a bedside clock, alarm clock. It's got a little alarm on it. Really cool, nifty little free gift. Back to the program. But a quick lesson, a meteoroid is what is flying through space, okay? A meteor is what burns up in the atmosphere, and that's what you see as shooting stars. A meteorite is what falls to Earth, and we make watch dials out of. So here we go. It is 43 and a half millimeters in diameter. It is 13.2 thick to a flat sapphire crystal with inner anti-reflective coating, 51 millimeters on this lug tip to lug tip. Solid screw down case back, we'll get to that in a minute. It is a 20 millimeter strap. It comes served on this single pass leather strap. I feel like on this portion, they may have cheaped out just a bit. I don't know. Could have probably done something a little bit nicer. I mean, it's a nice strap. It's signed and stuff, but so here is the case back, you can read it, Apollo 15. They have the date of the, uh, the mission, the name of the meteorite, which I will not pronounce, uh, the LE number, and a whole bunch of stuff around the outside. So this is powered by Bulova's NP20 high performance quartz movement. It beats at 262,000 uh, hertz, or 262 kilohertz, which is a little bit more than your standard quartz of 30 something thousand and change. It's one more power of two is how they get to 262 kilohertz. 
means a more accurate uh, a more accurate movement and it also is a chronograph uh, let's see water resistance is 50 meters weight on this drop titanium is a mere 95 grams keep in mind a meteor a meteorite is mostly iron so the dial is heavy but <laughs> you don't really can't tell because the dial is so darn thin let's come up let's come up on that beautiful meteorite dial so you've got hands for telling the time out hour minute uh, running seconds is down here, 17, 18, 19. Oh, it's ticking twice a second, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so that's running seconds. So let's run the chronograph and see what happens. We press this top pusher, nice solid click. We get chronograph seconds starts moving. It's moving at a nice smooth pace. Again, that's 262 kilohertz. I've covered this before just because it's moving smoother. doesn't make it more accurate, but the fact that it's a 262 kilohertz movement is what makes it more accurate. You can make this hand beat once per second if you want, and it would still maintain the same accuracy. We have a running fraction of a second elapsed uh, timer here, or elapsed chronograph. Uh, this is measuring uh, 1 20th of a second, and it stops moving after about 30 seconds to preserve battery. But keep in mind, it is still running in the background. If I were to stop it now, I would get the uh, fraction of a second I stopped it at. We'll restart it. And then over here would be elapsed minutes, which is going to come up on a minute shortly. But we'll stop and we will reset. And there you go. Around the uh, perimeter, you do have the uh, tachymeter. I've done videos on this as well, how to use it. I'm fairly convinced that nobody uses it, uh, but it looks nice, right? Maybe more accurate would be a telemeter. Uh, I know a lot of people, a lot of people ask me for telemeters. Telemeter is what you use when you uh, see lightning, then hear the thunder. It tells you how far away the storm is. Uh, but for a space watch, telemeter probably doesn't make much sense. Tachymeter does, measuring uh, how often something happens in a certain period of time. Uh, but here's the case, again, blasted titanium and some polished titanium accents. Uh, I think I pretty much covered everything about the watch. Let's, um, let's do a quick loom shot and then let's try it on. It is a beautiful blue glowing loom. I, don't, I do not know actually what kind of compound they use. It, this would remind me of a BGW-9. It is fairly white in daylight, uh, and at night it glows a luscious, a luscious awesome green. Uh, excuse me, awesome blue. And here it is on my six and a half, excuse me, six and three quarter inch wrist. Looks good, feels good. 43 millimeter size is, is the right one for me. The 45 would be too big, a 45 millimeter lunar pilot that is. But there I am, whoops, there I am on the strap. You can see, I can probably go down to a six and, about a six inch wrist, I would say, and way up on the far side. But a 20 millimeter, you know, you could put on this whatever you want. Uh, a bracelet obviously would be an issue because of the blasted titanium, would be tough to match the color. Uh, but rubber, leather, another nylon, whatever you like, uh, would be super nice. And I think that's going to do it. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you the Bulova Lunar Pilot Titanium Limited Edition with Meteorite Dial. Did I get it all in there? I think I did. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Questions, comments, concerns, anything else you want to say, please leave it down below and I'll be sure to address it as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.